The Before I Die Project comes to life in St. Louis. More on this global art project next on City Corner. Before I Die is a global art project that can be found on more than 300 walls in something like 50 countries. And here to talk about what's happening in St. Louis, please welcome our guest, Chelsea Ritter Sornan from the St. Louis Mural Project, and Robert Fishbone, who is an artist of On the Wall and affiliated with On the Wall Productions. Welcome to you both. Good morning, Steve. Thank you. I shouldn't say affiliated, it's your, it's your deal. It's my deal. Okay. <laughs> before I die, I bet that's caught a lot of people's attention when we say that. They think, what do we mean before I die? And who, who among us hasn't thought in our mind things we want to accomplish, do, say, or achieve before I die, Chelsea? Absolutely. I think it's something that a lot of times we don't like to verbalize, but it's definitely something that we all think about who doesn't have a bucket list. And I think that's the brilliance of this project and why it's become such a worldwide phenomenon. Robert, you and I are a lot older than Chelsea. I wonder if our bucket list, does that mean our bucket list is longer than hers or shorter? Mine's shorter. Because <laughs> you've done most of it? No, I just don't want to be so attached to, uh, to too many things. I'm being very choosy. Okay, yeah. well, that makes sense. Uh, Chelsea, as I understand it, uh, you're with the St. Louis Mural Project, mm -hmm. and um, you brought the Before I Die Project to that group's attention originally. Right. Sure, yeah, we just had a really active Facebook page. That's how the group even started. And uh, I just had seen it in the past in other cities, and so I posted the link. And Robert and one of our, menus, or one of our members, Michael Simpson, um, immediately joined together and uh, started investigating locations and places to do it. And uh, Robert had had a past affiliation with Craft Alliance because he'd done work with them in the past, and they said, what a great site. Okay, so we're going to get to this more later, but the Before mm -hmm. I Die project has is, is, been based in St. Louis at the Craft Alliance on the Del Mar Loop. Uh, before we get to that, Robert, talk a little bit about what the project is, just briefly, Before I Die, the whole concept of it. So, um, Candy Chang, who's an artist from New Orleans, she had someone very close to her die suddenly, an older woman who was a mentor, almost like a second mother. As she was grieving, she remembered how much Joan, this woman, had wanted to do before she died. And as part of her, her grieving process, Candy started thinking about, as Chelsea said earlier, you know, everybody thinks about you know, what they want to do before they die, but nobody ever get a chance to really express it. So she, Candy created a forum, a public forum, on a building with a simple statement, before I die, I want to, and she stepped back. Well, at the end of the first day, this entire wall was covered with people's hopes and dreams and aspirations and jokes and whimsical and deep, heartfelt feelings. So what happens is you're walking down the street and you see this, this board or the side of the building, whatever it might be, at whatever location, before I die, I want to. You're walking by, you see it, and you just fill it in. Right, just little buckets of chalk, you just reach in. And, and once you see that other people have done it, you go, oh, I guess I can do this too. Mm -hmm. And people say silly things and they say really emotional things. So Chelsea, I guess it was a month or two ago that uh, we brought, we, I say we, you brought this idea to St. Louis. Sure. Yeah, it's had a great response so far and we're excited to take it further. We've had a lot of interest from other locations in St. Louis and a couple schools, a couple churches. Uh, we're investigating a couple places, you know, just all around, really, yeah. um, to take it next. <clears throat> all right. Later in the program, we've got some great uh, pictures of the um, of the Craft Alliance location and people filling it in, what the yeah. wall actually looks like. We'll get to that later. But let's talk a little bit about public art and murals. Mm -hmm. Robert, you have a long history in St. Louis. I do. In that regard. So um, I, I came to St. Louis in 1973 with Sarah Lindquist. And, uh, the Your job, wife. Right, my late wife. And uh, the job we thought we were going to have, which was doing video production, fell through the first day we were here. An opportunity came up for us to do murals, though we had never done them before. Uh, we had friends who had done them, so we figured, well, we could do that. And in fact, we did. We did our first mural. And uh, from that one grew many others. There, there had been a number of murals done in St. Louis before then, 
um, but, but we really took it in a new direction. And I always think of you and people with a good memory will remember, because uh, I moved back to St. Louis in the late 80s and your Lindy Squared was still downtown. Uh, oh. What building was mm -hmm. that? That was on the Lion Gas Building. Right, I'll, I'll never just forget that one, so that's a good example. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, before we get specifically, uh, more specific about the Before I Die project, let's talk a little about public art and murals in general, and let's look at some pictures, uh, Robert, and I think a lot of them may be your work, right? Well, actually, this first one is not my work. This was a mural done in 1967 by six uh, African-American artists in St. Louis. Similar murals were done in Chicago and New York, and it basically depicts uh, famous African-American uh, people, uh, you know, icons. And uh, this was on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, was up for a while, um, and uh, it eventually came down, as, as many murals do. Let's go to the next one. There's a detail from that painting of Martin Luther King. Uh -huh. Keep going. So this is a mural that uh, was created at Antioch College, which is where Sarah and I both went to college, and this was the inspiration for us as we had our own opportunity. Uh, this mural is a picture of what you would see if the building wasn't there. And so that was, was our tradition, was how do you warp reality in, in, in creating public art? Let's go to the next one. Uh, this is the first mural that Sarah and I did. Uh, we called it Wally because it was our first wall. And um, <laughs> it was 125 feet long, 45 feet tall. We got 23 friends to help it, just like um, uh, Huckleberry Finn or Tom Sawyer would have done, uh, getting people's help. Um, it was incredibly well received in the city, especially by secretaries from across the street who no longer had to look at a blank wall. Yeah. And suddenly this whole idea of murals on blank revealed walls uh, emerged in people's consciousness. It really spruces up um, <clears throat> a, a, an otherwise bland urban landscape. That's one of the immediate yeah. effects. We were talking about Lindy Squared, that's it there. Right, so in a uh, very long story short, um, we had this idea in 1975 to do a mural that would change depending on if you were close or far away. Uh, way before computers, people were still looking at the Bell Picture phone. How little information do you need to recognize somebody's face? Um, the most obvious face in St. Louis was Lindbergh. We got this photograph made. It took us two years to do it, which eventually turned out to be the coincidental 50th anniversary of Lindbergh's flight, and our mural became the official symbol. It was up for four years, and in this picture you can see it's starting to be torn down, which was in 1981. I've always thought they should put it back up somewhere. It's just so well, iconic for St. Louis. I think. It's, right. in, it's in the History Museum right well, now. Well, it's had an up-down life. Um, it was in, I recreated it as a sculpture in St. Louis Center, Then three summers ago my son and I cut it out, donated it to the History Museum, and they're planning on putting it up in a new exhibit uh, in uh, a year. Uh -huh. What do you think, Chelsea? Talk just a little bit about mm. uh, your involved with the St. Louis Mural Project why you do it or why you think it's important to have such a thing? Sure, I mean, public art gives people ownership of their city. It makes, it makes a, a usual walk to work or um, jog around the park more exciting. Um, it increases tourism. It gives people really a landmark that might otherwise just be a building. And, and you know, they, me by the mural. They took the, the Lindsay one down. Do you think that's mm -hmm. part of it though, that it should change? Maybe public art shouldn't be forever. I think art always changes. That's the nature of it. Um, I think it should change. You know, times change, and public art is so reflective of our current situations, whether they're social, political, artistic. Um, and I think it is important for it to change and progress. I, well, I still think Lindsay Square should be back downtown, sure, I but agree. I'll, I'll lobby. I'll <laughs> lobby for that. I think we have two more pictures of uh, murals. So, uh, in the mid '80s, on Craft Alliance, I did a mural called "The Great U City Paint Toss." and it was a fundraiser, uh, people paid a dollar to take a cup of paint and fling it at the wall after they got proper technique in how to do it. Um, and then at the front of the wall was a dancer, so the idea that the dancer's movements are, 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 are cascading off in colors. Um, and that was up for a while, then Bill Cohn uh, did a mural after, after that, that was up for a while, and then eventually we, we came back with the Before I Die project. Now this is the same wall uh, than the Craft Alliance. Where the, the Before I Die was right, under, was right where that yeah. uh, colors were. And this was the only uh, murals of ours, uh, our Sarah's in mind, that are still up on the Willard Home Products at 39th and Park. We did about 35 outdoor murals in St. Louis, and really this is the only one that, that's still there. Chelsea, uh, tell me a little bit about the St. Louis Mural Project. How prolific are you guys? And maybe name a couple examples of what you've done recently. We're still starting out. Um, we, the Before I Die was our first major collaborative installation, oh. really. So mm -hmm. it's very new. It um, started out as 
a way for people to just swap ideas and say, hey, I like murals too. How about we try this out? You know, um, And then it quickly grew into something else. But we're still organizing yeah. ourselves, really, and that's exciting. I know you're not responsible for it, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a mural that just went up very recently in Grand Center right by Triumph Grill, if you know where that yeah, is in amazing. Olive. And, and do you know anything about that? Yeah, it was uh, by an artist named Momo. Um, and he has some St. Louis connections, but it's called a is it altered reality? O augmented reality. Augmented reality. Um, so basically they utilize technology on your iPhone or your iPad and you can look at the mural through it and it creates a um, well, it creates virtual a, reality yeah, experience. A, a, new, a new image appears when you line up the image in your phone with the actual mm -hmm. uh, painting. It's pretty cool. We're yeah. going to take a break in a couple of minutes. We, when we come back we're going to talk more specifically about the Before I Die project here in St. Louis. Before we do that though, you made a point that this is new to St. Louis, but it's been done around the world, what did I say, in 30 countries, over 300 locations, uh, something yeah, 50, like that? 50 countries. 50 countries. We have uh, four examples of that. Let's take a look at that now and tell me what you, what you know about these locations. So this is the original location that Candy Chang uh, created her first wall on. Uh, it was an abandoned building. She put it up, and by the end of the day, it was entirely filled. So this is what spawned this worldwide movement. Where is that? This is in New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, that was her hometown, I guess. Right. right. That's where she still lives. Uh, this is in a hair salon in New mm -hmm. York. So we, we find Before I Die not just on big, beautiful bulletin boards on walls, but we find it inside on temporary walls. Um, it, the situations are very varied. Uh, this is in Spain, as we can tell from the Spanish. And you can see um, everybody contributes to this, no matter their age or size. Um, and it's also uh, found that people don't just use their words, but they use their pictures. Uh, people like to express their feelings in a lot of different ways. And I bet you get a lot of you get a lot of different things. You know, maybe funny things, serious things, some things we that can't make you laugh say. or cry, or <laughs> some you can't even say. Right, some we can't even say. <laughs> now I want to know. <laughs> um, people say everything from "I want that million dollars" to. Um, you know, I want to meet my biological father. You mm -hmm. know, I want to, you know, cure a disease. Um, I mean, it's, it's just incredible what people write. Now, the, now the way this has worked uh, down at Craft Alliance, and I guess everywhere, is that you've only got so much space. So people will come and fill in before I die, I would. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets full, I guess you photograph it, erase it, and start over again? Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. how it works? They have, they have staff inside and volunteers that are helping clean it off as soon as it gets full, and they've said they've done it countless times now. Right, like every It's filled up day. so much. Um, the one of the most intriguing parts about this project, I think, was to watch the progression from being blank and just the before I die stencils to slowly filling up, and then once it caught on, it catches on like wildfire. So people are hesitant at first, and then as soon as they realize that they can identify with all these other answers on the wall, then they want to contribute to it. Right. It's the Before I Die Mural Project, and we're going to take a look at some examples of what happened right here in St. Louis and talk a little bit more about public art when we come back. So stay with us. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back, holla back, holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Only nude pics. Send me some. Text me.
financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I did nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. Steve Potter and welcome back to City Corner. The uh, Before I Die mural project is a global art project. That's our topic today. It uh, is really can be seen all over the world in different forms and shapes. And uh, it came to St. Louis a few months ago. We're talking with Robert Fishbone of On the Wall Productions and with Chelsea Ritter Sornan of the St. Louis Mural Project. And so just to recap, what you did was you took a wall on the side of Craft Alliance in the Del Mar Loop sort of made it a giant chalkboard, stenciled in the phrase, before I die, then, is that right? Before I die, I want to. Before I die, I want to. And then whoever happens to be walking by can fill in whatever that means to them. Mm -hmm. right. And some interesting responses, Chelsea? Anything stand out? Um, I mean, you probably saw hundreds of them, though. Yeah, there's an amazing range. Um, a lot of them have to do with traveling. I myself did one on traveling. Um, but like some people, you know, they want to cure cancer. Other sure. people, they like, you know, want to climb a mountain. Mm -hmm. One of the most um, inspiring moments that I witnessed was a really young child asking his mom, how do I spell go to college? <laughs> and writing oh, it nice. together. That That's was really cute. amazing. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a look at some, uh, some of the work that was actually done here in St. Louis on that project in a minute. Before I do that, Robert, I know that you have a condensed a lecture on public art that I would like to hear. Well put. Um, so if you look at 20 or 30,000 years ago is when the first evidence of people putting their marks on walls inside caves in France and Spain and uh, Aboriginal paintings in Australia. Something has compelled people to want to express themselves. We don't really know why people did it back then, but there are handprints on it. So people were aware of themselves. If you come forward in time, you see like Egyptian tomb paintings, you see all kinds of paintings in Italy, in Tibet, in South America. Uh, you keep coming forward, you see people use murals as a way to communicate during revolutionary times. Come even more forward into contemporary times, and then we find people who use murals to communicate to, say, narrow casting to their own neighborhood. Artists then took up the brush and started doing artworks. Sometimes it was, wow, wow look at my artwork big. Other people would do site-specific artworks. And the, one of the limitations, though, is that only people who are technically trained would do these murals. What Candy Chang did with the Before I Die project, she gave everyone a tool that they could express themselves just as you know, honestly um, as anyone else. Chelsea, the St. Louis Mural Project, which mm -hmm. you're part of, has produced a video, and we're going to see that right now. Do you want to set that sure. up? Definitely. We're, right now, we're raising funds for our first major collaborative large-scale mural. It's going to be at the intersection of 15th and Washington on Washington Avenue on the outside of Lab 1500, which is a small business incubator in St. Louis. So you're doing the Kickstarter thing, huh? Mm -hmm, absolutely. We figured given the nature of our group and how collaborative it's been, why not do a crowdfunded project? And what's your response been so far? In one week, we've raised just over $3,000. Wow. So we're well on our way, I believe, and we need to raise 8500 Well, let's take a look at that video. Absolutely. Public art is a staple to some of the world's greatest cities. Murals have the power to positively transform any urban environment. They attract tourism, build businesses, define landmarks, and empower communities. St. Louis has a rich mural history, and pockets of murals still exist. However, we have just started to scratch the surface. Empty, decrepit, old walls are everywhere in St. Louis. Each wall holds potential for a great piece of art. In one of our most historic and vibrant communities, the perfect spot awaits. So this is the wall, our first large-scale mural at Lab 1500 on Washington Avenue. I'm RJ. And I'm Chelsea. And we are with the STL Mural Project, a new group dedicated to getting more public art in St. Louis. This historic garment district building has been fully restored into an incubator for startups and new ideas. 
And what better way to showcase entrepreneurship than to visually highlight our city's pride, passion, creativity, and innovation. Lab 1500 is an entrepreneurial center, so there's tremendous momentum in St. Louis and we saw a, uh, a real need for a physical place that people could come to to really push their ideas forward. The link between art and entrepreneurship really gets to creativity. You've got entrepreneurs that are creative, artists that are creative. It revolves around uh, wanting to make something substantial. If you can just put a smile on somebody's face by some art that you created and make their day a little brighter, it's pretty awesome. I think that this mural is going to be kind of a catalyst for other murals to start popping up around that neighborhood and in other neighborhoods in St. Louis. I am super excited about contributing to public art in St. Louis or St. Louis itself. Washington Avenue is a neighborhood ripe with creativity and fosters progressive attitude and it has so many amazing things, we just want to add to all the amazing things that are down there. Getting out there to help St. Louis and be proactive and I just think that this project in this neighborhood is a great way to start doing it. We decided to go with a Kickstarter because this mural isn't for us. This mural is for St. Louis. It's for the community. This mural is truly an extension of the momentum going on in the St. Louis startup scene. And I really think that if we decide to do another mural of the same, we're going to need a bigger wall. <laughs> this is the opportunity to showcase the relationship between two thriving communities. This project can be the beginning of something exciting for our city. With your help, we can create this mural and continue to beautify St. Louis with public art. Well, Chelsea, we may have somebody that just saw that and thinks that's a great idea. I'd like, I'd like to uh, be a part of that or support that. Mm -hmm. What could they do? Absolutely, definitely check us out on Facebook. That's how we started. So if you just look up STL Mural Project, uh, on Facebook, you can easily find it. Um, you can go to stlmuralproject.com. We have a blog spot, stlmuralproject at blogspot. Um, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram under the same tags. And write a check if you want to. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Before I Die Project here in St. Louis. We're going to look at some examples right now down in the Del Mar Loop on the site of Craft Alliance. Went on for a couple of months. And uh, just talk about what we're looking at, both of you. So um, this is the Craft Alliance in the Del Mar Loop, which is actually the oldest building in the loop. And um, we approached them to see if they would be interested in, in hosting this, and they were all over it right from the beginning. They saw it as a great forum. You know, they're a community outreach organization. So this shows the wall um, as was built by um, Dan from Craft Alliance, who did a beautiful job. You can see um, the large words, before I die, and then rows of before I die, I want to, and the blank spaces for people to fill in. That's a closer and, look. Um, this is a closer look, and you can see someone has just started filling it in with one phrase. Uh, this was, I was there, I, I took this picture, so she wrote, you know, I want to see world peace. She spelled it P-E-A-S-E. -E. And I wasn't going to correct her. I mean, it was just, it was so beautiful. That's part of the charm of it, I guess. It was. I mean, people spell it however they spell it, they, whatever their handwriting is, it doesn't matter. It was just, a, you know, a, there's so many beautiful moments in these uh, projects. And you, as you can see, the wall fills up completely, not just on the lines, between the lines, above the lines, below the lines. People write over other people's writings. Huh. Some people will use the side of the piece of chalk and make it really big. Yeah, did you fill in a few, Chelsea? Over the absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I love how a lot of people used images, too. A lot of people drew little doodles to illustrate what they wanted to do mm -hmm. or um, you know, depicted it in other ways, which I love. And with social media these days, it's been amazing. Um, in the top corner of the wall, we just put hashtag before I die STL so that people could blast those photos out via their Instagram and their Twitter and on Facebook. And so we've been able to collect photos that way too. And everybody's able to express themselves that way as well. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite ones said, um, find Waldo, you know, kind of within <laughs> like this whole thing. Yeah, well, this is, this is a typical, um, you know, be fluent in French, find a mm. cure for something, visit somewhere, um, and, uh, you know, and the, and the colors make it beautiful. So it becomes its own art piece. Um, if you just look at it, uh, look at this, start a nonprofit funeral home. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Where'd that come from? Finally get it right. Know the answer. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, oh, and someone else said, find the cure for irony. <laughs> find the cure for irony? Yeah. That's not bad, the more so, I think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so people get very creative when they do this. Yeah, it's interesting to me, too, the variety of responses you get from, 
you know, sort of amusing ones like that. They're really serious things. Mm -hmm. and, and as uh, we mentioned in that last picture, it showed Dan from Craft Alliance erasing it because it fills up so quickly that um, like every other day it gets erased so people can That's keep That's a good writing. point to, uh, to make. One, you, you really concentrate on documenting. Before you erase the board, you wanted to document when right. it had already been done. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and someone from Craft Alliance, Katie Peace, she documents it every day and posts it on a dedicated website. Mm -hmm. So this all, uh, this all began somewhere else. It's gone global. It's finally hit St. Louis. You've done it here now. So is there a future to it? Does this have legs? As, as they say. Uh, yeah, you can uh, keep talking about what you mentioned before about the other places. Sure, we've definitely, via the mural project, we've had a lot of responses from a couple churches in the area, a couple schools, um, some individuals just that just want to put it on a neighborhood street corner. Um, so we have the stencils. All you need is chalk paint and chalk and, you know, a good roller, and you can really do it anywhere. So we're just... Um, Invest, we're putting a lot of energy right now towards our Lab 1500, but then definitely over the winter, we want to help people install their own projects around uh -huh. St. Louis. And Candy Chang, the, the, the woman who kind of started all this, I, I looked at some, I guess she put together a little booklet, a how-to booklet, and, she, mm -hmm. booklet, and mm -hmm. she's very specific in helping people how to start, what they need, what sure. to do. You know, she wants to make it as painless as possible because the idea is to empower people, not to put up all these complicated ways of, mm -hmm. of, of doing something. Are any of these walls, uh, before I did walls around the world, are any of them permanent? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't, I've never read that anything is like permanent, permanent, yeah. but everyone's different. It could be up for a few days, it could be up for months. I know there's some, the one in New Orleans has been up since she started two years mm -hmm. ago. Well, since you, you know, you document this as it goes on, do you think there'll ever be an exhibit? like down the road once the wall is gone? That would be incredible. Just a photo exhibit or maybe just a giant room full of chocolate. Right, and she's publishing you know? a book now, a lot of the best oh, of Before I Die from Around the World. What do you think yeah. we get out of this? We just have a few seconds left. What do we get out of this, I guess, as a participant, uh, thinking, about, thinking about finishing that phrase, Before I Die, I Want To? What do you think it really means? Well, for me, I, I think that it's empowering people to s express themselves in, in ways that maybe they're normally not given permission to do that. They're, they're allowed to like, on a let go of their fears. Uh -huh. Chelsea, a final word? Sure, I think it comes down to prioritizing what you believe is important. So, you know, are you doing what you want to do today? Mm -hmm. Something we should all think about. Well, we're gonna have some contact information come up and people can find out more about this project and support your, the St. Louis Mural uh, Project as well. So thank you both for being here, Chelsea, Robert, before I die, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have on this city corner. I hope you'll join us next time. Thanks so much. Bye.